did a demonstration for uh, the parent company at a big thing down in L.A. when they went pub when they went on the New York Exchange. And Frank made you know we we actually uh, Dan Lusky and I set it up and uh, we had fiber and we had demonstrating how the fiber was going to work and all that kind of stuff and we got a lot of interest got a lot of interest and so I wanted to do Cattell had a product line that was FM they'd done it all Don had done it uh, very clever stuff real solid stuff worked well but it wasn't going to work over fiber very well and they didn't want to change it they really didn't want to change it. The other thing is that they sold a lot of, uh, it was in the days when channels were growing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, start, when we started in a business, there was 12 channels. It was a big deal to go to 20. Mm -hmm. uh, the FCC put the kibosh on a lot of growth uh, back in the 70s and a couple of times, you know, all the manufacturers almost went out of business. And then, you know, that things had changed. And then along came um, the satellite, and all of a sudden the diversity of programming, channels, they needed more channels. And uh, so Cattell was right there in the forefront with their modulators. But the, but the thing about them was is that they were all fixed channel. And we had figured out how to do, you know, things agile. Uh, but I could never convince Benton and Frank, but primarily Benton, that we should, we, they kept saying, well, you're going to cannibalize our sales uh, if you bring out something that's frequency agile. So what's it going to do to the other? I said, what's the difference? We're still selling a box, but maybe we'll sell more of them. And it'll be easier for a guy that stocks the stuff. He stocks one box instead of 30. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but you know, we're doing okay. We're so they didn't want to do it. And uh, that was getting, you know, I was getting a lot of frustration. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike was trying to help me because he understood. Mike, Mike Morris was a, was a smart fellow. Uh, he was, uh, he was, he was probably tough to work for. Um, I didn't have to, uh, but he was—he was—he—he uh, he could figure out how to get things done. He, I, I just always liked Mike Morris, uh, and he's—he's uh, he's one of those where you look back and say, you know, geez, what a waste. Uh, but uh, and it, that's the way it turned out. Uh, his his life just you know disintegrated. But, uh, and, you know, and, and it was, I never really fully understood why. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, so we, we didn't, we didn't pursue a lot of these things. And, I got and Mike was in charge of manufacturing too, right? So that's why he had an appreciation for all the single channel inventory oh, issues, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Mike was, you know, like I say, he was all, and, you know, and he had uh, McKelvey's here at the time. McKelvey was running the show. Uh, interesting man. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> that really didn't belong in that position. He didn't, he really didn't have any experience in telecommunications at all. Or, you know, and you know, so he basically, moderated arguments between the rest of us. And, uh, but it just got to the point where it's, you know, I don't, I don't see this going too far. Something's going to happen. So I turned in my resignation like a year at a time. I told them I was going to leave in a year, and I did. And that's how we got to where we are. And there was no non-compete type issues or anything like that? No, no, we never I, I, I never saw any of those kind of things. No one ever mentioned any of that mm -hmm. in those days. I mean, they, you know, they knew what I was going to do. Uh, they didn't want to do it. If they don't want to do it, I, I told them what we were going to do. It.